All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about this dimensions, how to get the dimensions on this wheel. Like, say this was a pulley and you wanted to get the outside radius dimensions of how many turn or how many millimeters this would turn from the outside radius if you went one rotation. We're going to talk about that conversions and we're going to go back. And again, this is using a Kinetic 6000 drive instead of a SIP Motion uh, uh, Kinetics 5500. So uh, real quick, I have everything online, but I'm gonna go offline to do this conversion. So I'm gonna open up my servo wheel axis, okay? And then I need to understand my measurement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to drive and motor, and I'm gonna calculate. Now, what do I calculate? That's a good question. So um, the center of the actual motor, the center of the motor right here, to the outside dimension, right? Which is gonna be right here. It's 75 millimeters, okay? So that measurement from the center is 75 millimeters. Um, the ruler was upside down, so just in case you did see that, um, when it comes down to it, uh, this is the equation, right? So 75 millimeters times pi. Why are we doing times pi? Because it's a, it's a round, object right so we need to understand from the very center to the outside to get that dimension the whole radius we need to times that by pi and what we come up with is uh, 235.61944901919 so we need to take that whole conversion because we want to be granular right we want to paste that in there and then we want to say I want this movement per one motor revolution. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna update, I'm gonna update my actual movement right here. I'm gonna update my actual conversions. Then I'm gonna hit close. Then I'm gonna come over here and then I'm gonna go online. I'm gonna download because I did change my conversion rate of this actual servo motor. So uh, once we do this, what we can come back and do is we can actually test this using motion axis direct commands to verify that the outside radius and again never touch any kind of moving parts with a potential of like power that's powered on or something like that this is not actually being controlled right now it doesn't have power so um, again just for safety wise right but this is a, a mounted servo system uh, it's made for training I built it for training so I can touch it all day long because this is just a wheel I bought from Harbor Freight uh, that's that simple, but it is an, a direct re replica, uh, a direct direct um, example of using like a pulley, if you would. So you can actually, because it's it's a cylinder or it's it's actually a round object. So if you think about this, you can use the same conversion for a pulley. <clears throat> so let's open up our, our motion, our, our actual servo, and let's do motion axis direct commands. And motion axis direct commands, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on first. So right now you see this little marker is in the very center. I'm going to turn it on. I can't move it now. So now it's controlled energy. So in real life, you do not want to put your hands on anything that's being controlled. You don't, when there's power on it, you do not want to put your hands on it. This is a training environment only. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come over here and my positions, I'm going to change to incremental okay and then I'm going to paste in my conversion that I put in to determine this is my outside radius so my whole radius from point to point is going to be 235.61 is some change right so let's put a speed in there we want to run I'm going to say 25 <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we'll hit uh, increment so I'm going to hold my ruler here so my ruler is going to start in the in the basically the center of my mounting bracket okay on this white piece and then we're going to actually indicate movement and as we run around we should do one full rotation so when we come back we should stop and we did right here so if you see that once again I use my finger because I think the ruler moved on me so this is the actual movement right so one motor rotation is going to be moving 235.6194 and that's going to be 
in the movement, right? So we can actually change the real equation to that is, I think it kind of summed it up. Let's actually do that one more time. The real equation is that, so you can see, if you wanted to be absolutely perfect, you can see that right here. You see it does kind of, uh, kind of round it up for you when you're using motion axis direct commands. So, but the point of it is, is this, from the center of the object to get the full radius, to get the actual movement from one revolution, that's the equation you do. And that's how you do it. So um, with that said, I just want to give a small example of how to do things, right? Because when you're doing something like this, when you're doing like a, let's just come over here and tilt this down a little bit, come over here and this right here, okay? When you're doing the outside radius, you want to measure from the center point. Now, my just forgive me for that, but it, it my um, measurement, my ruler right here is going to be upside down. But that's just because of the way the, the camera is and everything, so just keep in mind the center point to the outside edge. And then times that by pi, and that would be what you get. So at this point, that was our wheel diameter. That's how we got it, that's how we equated it, and this is how we get the point of movement right here, right? So if we're trying to get the movement to be absolutely perfect, we need to determine what the ratio is. And you see that it stops right there on that, that actual reflector every single time. So we do know we do have our conversion right. So at this point, being that you, you have your conversion right, you know that that is, uh, like say for instance, this was a pulley, then you know you can carry on to the next part of the equation if you were to have anything connected to that pulley or if this was just your end effector, whatever the case may be. But again, I wanted to show you how to do that first equation because this is going to be part of your equation if you're like say this was a pulley and it was connected to another pulley, you need to know the pitch of both pulleys before you can actually convert anything. This is how to determine the pitch of the pulley. This is how to determine the pitch of the pulley off a of servo that's directly connected. So hopefully you learned a lot from that video. I'm gonna turn my servo off, turn my servo off so it has no energy, and then everything is completely safe. Again, this is a training environment, so um, there is no risk, there is no worries, um, but do not touch any moving parts in real life. Again, we don't wanna see anybody get hurt. We wanna make sure we understand and we educate ourselves into moving forward to being a better, uh, better in automation altogether. Whether you're a maintenance technician, whether you're you're an engineer, whether you're somebody trying to learn, trying to get into it, trying to you know better yourself, um, I admire that. So I just wanted to, to do my part in teaching as much as possible. So I hope this video really did help you, and we'll see you guys on the next one.